Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at why coffee makes you poop. As any barrister beginning their 5 a.m. shift will tell you, a morning cup of coffee is essential for a chipper attitude and a healthy psyche. The dilemma some have is that right after you indulge, it hits you. The number two train is about to arrive and you don't want to be stuck in traffic when it does. In fact, coffee's effect on the colon is on par with eating a 1,000 calorie meal. It's also interesting to note that the reaction is not volume or temperature dependent. Women are more susceptible to these effects than men, 53% for women and 19% for men. And of those affected, 58% reported the reaction would only occur if they had not already evacuated their bowels, and 52% state that the reaction only occurs in the morning. So what exactly is going on here? A commonly touted theory is that the caffeine inside of coffee is the culprit. After all, caffeine's effects on your gastrointestinal tract have been known for quite some time. More specifically, one theory about the exact mechanisms that may be causing this concerns concerns how caffeine stimulates your central nervous system, stimulating your sympathetic nervous system, your fight-and-flight nervous system, with the net result being the constriction of your blood vessels. Normal responsive to low oxygen levels, a grouping of cells called chemoreceptors can get stimulated by this constriction. Indirectly, this will have a response affecting your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve can stimulate part of your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest nervous system, which increases the rhythmic contractions within the colon. Thus, taking in caffeine may result in an increase in your gastric motility, known as peristalsis. In layman's terms, this essentially is a wave like contracting and relaxing of the muscle, forcing the contents of your digestive system to move their way towards your backside. However, the caffeine causes you to poop after drinking coffee idea has since been debunked for, well, several reasons. Now, to begin with, caffeine will usually begin its stirring effects about 15 minutes after ingestion. Those effects will continue for several hours, with its half-life at around 5 to 6 hours on average. So why is this important here? One study specifically looked at the colon's response response to coffee by placing an anal probe in the large intestines of those who had an increase in peristalsis from it. Coffee's crappy effects were shown to begin within four minutes after ingestion, and the increase in peristalsis remained for only approximately 30 minutes. These time frames do not support caffeine being this particular promoter of poop. The caffeine cause was further debunked when it was shown that increased peristalsis did not happen with other caffeinated beverages, but would happen with decaffeinated coffee. So, if it's not the caffeine, what in coffee is causing the urge to defecate in some people? While it hasn't been proven yet, the leading theory behind coffee's boost in productivity of your waste management system is a combination of several hormonal and neural mechanisms, some of which are known and some of which are currently probably unknown. The known include a rise in acid production within your stomach and the release of the two hormones gastrin and cholecystokinin, which have something of a laxative effect. To begin with, coffee is relatively acidic, having a pH of between 4.5 and 6. And for reference, in case you've forgotten your high school chemistry, 7 is neutral. In fact, there have been over 40 types of acid found in roasted coffee. These can be broken down into three different groups, aliphatic, alicyclic, carboxylic, and chlorogenic. Importantly, chlorogenic acid will also promote increased acid production by your stomach, elevating the acidic environment. In healthy people, this acid bath will aid in the digestion of proteins and fats. The stomach responds to the acid production by moving its contents more quickly into your small intestine. Increased acid levels will also trigger the release of gastrin and cholecytokinin, which provokes the aforementioned peristalsis. Gastrin is produced when the body senses the presence of food in the stomach, or your vagus nerve gets stimulated by one of your senses, like taste or smell, in response to food. Its release causes several reactions within the body. The gastroesophageal sphincter will constrict, keeping the food in your stomach, not allowing it back up into your esophagus. It increases the motility of your digestive tract and gall bladder in preparation for food's arrival into the small intestine. Simultaneously, it will relax the valve between your small intestine and colon. This will allow the food already in your small intestine to move on into the large intestine. Finally, it increases peristalsis throughout the entire digestive system. The overall result of gastrin is essentially out with the old and in with the new. Cholecytokinin, while similar in structure to gastrin, functions differently, causing other reactions. It's also released in response to food being introduced into 
into the stomach. It stimulates your gallbladder to release bile into the intestines, which helps digest fats. This could be why people who have painful gallstones often choose to avoid coffee. It also stimulates pancreatic juices, helping to break down large food particles into molecules that can be absorbed by the body. Cholecytokinin has also been shown to stimulate your hypothalamus, signaling the body that it's had enough food, and it is thought that this is one of the mechanisms that give coffee its appetite suppression effect. All of this said, just because these are probably the main influences in your coffee-induced BM, it is still thought that there are probably other things going on as well. This is because there are over a thousand chemical compounds found within coffee, and many can affect the gastrointestinal system. The digestive tract is also extremely complex and is still not fully understood. For instance, the morphine-like compounds found in coffee called exorphins attached to opiate receptors located throughout your body. There are four known types of these, delta, kappa, mui, and the very boringly named opiate receptor-like 1, or ORL1. All of these receptors are known to affect peristalsis in some way. However, it should be noted that most of these tend to have the opposite effect as coffee. They usually actually cause constipation. So why is this being considered as a contributor? The debate arises because there are so many different reactions that can take place depending on which specific type of opioid receptor gets stimulated. It also matters at what point in the signaling process of neurons you stimulate the receptor. As one researcher put it, the GI motor effects of opioids are complex because depending on whether interruption of the excitatory or inhibitory neural pathways prevails, muscle relaxation or spasms will be observed. When you combine the complex nature of opioids with the fact that there haven't been many studies specifically identifying the regulatory properties of ORL1, you begin to understand the obstacles facing researchers. For instance, it's known that ORL1 reacts more quickly than other opioid receptors, seeing results after only two minutes of exposure to an agonist. This makes it a tempting receptor to look at, given the timeframes associated with your distal colon's reaction to coffee. In the end, pun intended, given the extremely complex nature of the human digestive system and the multitude of compounds found in coffee, it will take a significant amount of research to nail down all the contributing factors in coffee making some people defecate. But as I finish my morning cup of coffee, I would like to thank all of those brave individuals to date who have voluntarily had an anal probe inserted for science. This gives us some idea of the mechanisms involved here, as well as safely rule out others that we previously hypothesized might be contributors. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos just like this seven days of the week. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. So just click on those to go and check them out. And thank you for watching.